syrup. Yeah. I have, you're right. I have not had a good Dao Fu Fa in probably like five years. Okay. He said, he said don't mess it up. You just gotta eat it while it's cold. One by one. No, no Gao Lan. No Gao Lan. I did mess up my tofu. Okay. What's going on everybody? You know that we just moved back to New York City. We're in the LES Chinatown area right now. This area is famous for a lot of things, but perhaps the thing that is most famous for is delicious cheap eats. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be hitting up several of our favorite Chinatown cheap eat spots where you can eat full for, I would say, under $10 each. All right, Dave, we gotta start off this video by going to the number one most famous cheap eat spot in Chinatown and maybe the entire city, Wa Fung. Let's go. All right, David, I just got out of Wa Fung, man. I got two two item combos. That means I got every meat possible. What the, are the uh, four meats possible at the, Wa Fung? The four meats possible is the roast chicken, you have the roast duck, and then you have the roast pork, and then you have the barbecue pork. Each of these was $7. Um, you could get it as cheap as $5. You can get it as cheap as 5 but because I wanted the, the seal yuk, which is the roast pork, is a little bit more expensive. And dude, I got extra sauce. You guys, for $7, I challenge you to find a better deal in New York City and Manhattan. Guys, we're not gonna spend too much time here. This goes without saying, this is probably the best cheap eat in Chinatown. Perhaps in the entire mm. region of Manhattan. You guys have already seen a million videos about Wa Fung here on Christie Street. We gotta keep it moving. Handles. That's the handle god. What is often said to be the most famous hole in the wall in Chinatown, and that spicy village here on Forsyth. This is a Hunan spot that is co-owned or at least maybe owned by people that are Fujinese. It's actually one of our favorite restaurants in the area, so let's check it out. Are you guys from Henan or Fujian? Uh, I'm from Fujian, but that's Fu make Hina. Uh, the Fu sure. is a, a Hina style. Okay. All right, Andrew, I figured it out. They're all from Fujian, but they're cooking Henan food. That's okay with me. Describing this chicken pepper dish, um, the peppers are really cooked well. You can see that they're very soft. There's plenty of wok hay, meaning that the chicken is kind of burnt here, which is great. It's juicy. It kind of looks like a type of like teriyaki chicken almost, uh, tossed with peppers. And it tastes actually a little bit like teriyaki, but it, it's different. Eight dollars. Huey beef noodles. The noodles, the noodles are handmade back there, and um, man, it's just tasty. Mm. Tomato egg. Fan chia chao dan mian. Fan chia chao dan. Fan chia mm. is uh, tomato. Chao dan is stir fried egg. These are stir fried egg tomatoes. So David, this is one of your favorite dishes, of course, tomato egg. This is a Henan Tang Bao cooked by Fujinese. Oh, I mean, those are the cheapest soup dumplings you can buy. Yeah. Soup dumplings being either a Tang Bao or a Xiao Long Bao, those are really, that's a really good deal right there. This is a Rou Jiao Mo, AKA kind of a minced pork sandwich. Mm. The reason I like Spicy Village a lot is it's a great way to introduce people to regional cuisines without costing a lot of money. That has a lot more flavor than a lot more expensive Rojo Moors that I've had before. Well, everything here um, rounded up with tax, $8, $8, $8, $8, five. So that's $32, $37 for all this food. It could probably serve three of us. All right, David, favorite dish out of these five? All right, for me, I just got two. When I'm, for the, my go-to is tomato egg. Okay. But when I'm feeling like I need the protein, I get the garlic chicken. Woo! The garlic pepper chicken. Pepper chicken, that's what I meant. I meant the, pe the pepper chicken, that's See, what I meant. He's so hungry, he can't even think about the right word. Uh, Andrew, what was your favorite, man? I gotta say the pepper chicken. Yeah! It's just really good, man. Cause you know what it is, Andrew? In Henan, they would never make the chicken that sweet. And then in Fujian, they would never cook the peppers that hot. But it's the combination of the sweet and the hot together. All right, Andrew, that was a great way to start off. Let's head on to the next hole in the wall. Mm. Okay, so the next spot up on our Cheap Eats Hidden Gems food crawl is 74th size, Andrew, we've got Bep Ga. All right, this spot is started by a Parisian Vietnamese guy and it only specializes in poached chicken. That means chicken salad, chicken pho, 
chicken noodle plates. All right, so technically this spot has $2 signs on uh, Yelp, but it's $12 for a bowl of pho, which just put it out, uh, it's just $1 outside of the range. Essentially, I mean, it's like one and a half dollar signs. I still, for me, I put it in the $1 sign range because, you know, usually I'm not gonna get a drink, but let's check it out. All right, we're here with the owner, On. You're raised in Paris, man. T tell us more about Bep Guy. Well, Bep Guy is my idea. Uh, it's come out from a love of uh, chicken rice. So I have, we have a version of chicken rice in Vietnam. Then from chicken rice, you have to make a broth. So he came up like, oh, should make chicken pho, which we don't see very often. Did you want to open up just a chicken and rice spot and then you realized that might not be enough items so then you he, had it on? He came up from that, that idea at first, yeah. Real quick, on for the people, you know, we have a lot of American viewers, they might not believe you're from France. Why don't you just let them know something in French? Salut tout le monde, je suis Anne de France, et, uh, et je suis Vietnamien, et, et aussi j'habite à New York. All right, you guys, I have a uh, dry pho ga right here, and this looks really dope, and it comes with the uh, some broth right here, you sip on that. The broth here at Bep Ga, tastes unlike anything you've ever had before. I do believe it tastes a little bit more like French bone broth. Yo, I'm gonna go in on the pho ga, David. You can go in on the on the dry pho right now. Pho ga? Dry pho ga. Mm. They definitely have some French sensibilities here because although the portion might be a little bit smaller, the quality is higher. Guys, each of these is $12, so I'd still say that's pretty fair price, um, especially for New York City um, and for a really cool experience. Andrew, I'm going in on the Tunisian French baguette banh mi, merket banh mi. And actually the bread, even though it's it's chewy, it's not too crispy, it's not cutting the top of my mouth. We're gonna end it off, guys. Kom ga Hanoi. So it's basically like the Vietnamese uh, Hainanese chicken and rice. I got everything in this bite. Mmm. C'est la vie. Merci beaucoup. Comment allez-vous? You gotta go to <coughs> Bep Ga. <clears throat> Bep Ga. Kitchen chicken. Chicken kitchen. All right, our next cheap eat in Chinatown that is $1 sign on Yelp is Steam House, and this is a Cantonese spot. This spot is truly a hidden gem because it's only got one review on Yelp as of right now. It actually recently opened. The people who opened up Steam House are from Hoi Ping, Guangdong. Our great grandfather is from nearby Hoi Ping, a different mountain called Hok San, yeah. He Shan. And that's actually, I believe, where the lion dance is from. Yeah, the uh, the Chinese American lion, yeah, the lion dance that everybody does, that is from Hok San. We really like this spot in there. I cannot say that it's not because my guy over here is from Hoi Ping and our great grandfather was from Hok San. Yo, <laughs> let's, let's go to Steam House. All right, yo, what should we get? Yo, John, what should we get, man? My I think we brother, start man. off with uh, the all pack trophon, the super combo oh, we, we That's what we're getting today. You guys can get, you know, a more regular one, but we're getting the Mato Yao. Mato Yao yeah, means like, like, like everything we got it. This okay. is the everything we got at the Mato Yao Cheng Fun. Everything here is very affordable, ranging from about six to eight bucks. So, yes, it is very much $1 sign on Yelp. David, we got the spread here at Steam House. What are we looking at? This is the Matto Yao Cheng Fun. Basically, okay. this was an all-in combo. Supreme Cheng Fun. Mm. That is six bucks. Their Cheng Fun at Steam House, in my opinion, is a five out of five. It's a must get. Soy sauce chicken leg. See how guy. Mm. Wow. One thing I always notice about Steam House, Andrew, is their food tastes really clean. Mm. That's a good point. Andrew, of all the curries I've had in New York City, yeah. Steam House's Kale Kai curry chicken rice with potatoes reminds me the most of how we would eat it in Kent. Oh my goodness. Man, Yo, it tastes I, so much like Andrew, home. These this is called their beef noodle. So basically this is gonna be a dry kind of oil-based noodle. And these are barbecue pieces of beef, kind of operate like gigantic funsu, where they're like really thick rice noodles that are very stretchy and chewy and sticky. It's unlike a lot of noodles that you can get out there. David, you are a fan more of kind of like gong zai mean dishes. For me, I don't see that much flavor here, but I could be wrong. Well, I'll tell you this, there may or may not be a lot of flavor in that conventional sense, but it appeals to me. Very light, 
um, lighter than most people would like. This, I would say, is probably their dish that reminds me most of something you would get at a Hong Kong cafe. This is the Tao Fu Fa. Bro, I got my own. You got your own Tao Fu Fa. So basically, this is really, really soft silken tofu with a syrup on top. Mo Gao Lan, but Andrew Gao Lan, but it's all good, Mo Gao Lan. I love the loaded Cheng That is like the uh, loaded carne asada fries of Cheng Fun. That is. Go with the oil noodles right here. They're bouncy. Lightly oiled, heavily flavored, I love it. All right, if you guys are liking this video and you're learning something and you wanna try one of these spots next time you come to New York, uh, definitely hit that like button, click subscribe, turn on your notifications, and there's more to go, man. Let's go. All right, David, we're outside of a spot that is said to have the best one ton in the entire city. Let's head into Wu's One Ton King and find out what the hype is about. Is he really the one ton king? Guys, for lunch, it starts at 6.50 and it only really goes up until $8, so everything here is under $10 that we got. Andrew, we might be looking at one of the best under $10 spots in the entire city of Manhattan. $7.50, the best one ton in Manhattan, purportedly. Yo, I like how the, I like how the filling is still intact. There's a very thin one ton skin. And that's the thing about one ton skin is when it comes together, it kind of gives you a different texture. It's kind of gooey. And honestly, it, it just kind of slides down your throat, pause, but it, it's actually hella good. Wow, wow, their one tons are banging. The other, the second dumpling of the three dumpling. A lot of toy in that one. It, it reminds me a lot more of, uh, like I said, the Chiu Zhou style, Gao Choi thing. Gao Choi is uh, a type of green chai. All right. The Chiu Zhou dumpling third and last final kind. It has wood ear, shrimp, pork. My ranking goes Cantonese one ton, then it goes the gao choy, and then it goes the chiu chow one. I agree with you. Guys, I have the scallion ginger noodles. You know I'm a big fan of uh, jang chong, gong ch gong chong in general, but to have this over just a bed of one ton noodles, kind of like in their Chinese angel hair pasta manner, I mean, this is just, this while is a simple, while you go in on that, simple Andrew, but delicious I'm dish. actually gonna go have this uh, one ton right here with the uh, siwap and cha siu Ooh. in it. This broth is different than the triple one ton bone broth. This is a different broth. I believe there's more shrimp and pork broth in this one. Mm. And it's a simple dish. It has a little bit of that uh, like oyster sauce flavor, but really mostly it just brings out the scallion ginger. Try this. Out of all the spots in Manhattan, Wu's One Ton King tastes the most like Hong Kong. Mmm. Okay, so their cha siu is not as candied, but it's super tender. Siu so, yun pai what? Oh man, their version Ooh. of the salt and pepper pork chop looks really, really well Look done. That. You're gonna love this. It's not too battered. I think sometimes the salt and pepper pork chop is too crunchy and the skin is too thick, but this is perfect right here. Wu's so, One Ton King! Honestly, this is one of the best Hong Kong homestyle restaurants I've ever been to, actually. Uh, beef brisket. Beef tendon. Check out this piece of beef brisket with tendon. Wow. Andrew, if you take a little bit of sip of um, the soup they give you with the lo mein. Oh my gosh. Holy crap, I did not anticipate that, Andrew. Whoa. Their beef has just been stewed for hours and hours and hours. Bro, you know how you know it's good is because the tendon is sticky and just breaks down in your mouth. Guys, hakao. Sha jiao, AKA shrimp dumpling in mm. a rice wrap. Shu mai. Or as you would say, xiao mai. Oh, that's a really good xiao mai. Man. Get oh, you, dog. Oh, oh. Wow. Let's go. Mm. I don't need this. We ain't going small. Oh, I'm alive. Everything we had today was below $8 at retail price. Obviously, you know, you can tip if you want and you should, especially during these times. You are getting an experience like you are transported to the streets of Shenwan, Hong Kong. Something caught my eye, Yifang Fruit Tea. Okay. This Yifang is... Fruit Tea is a chain from Taiwan. Probably Taiwan, like the, it's almost like, I want to say the pride of Taiwan. I would say it's the premium Taiwanese tea chain. A hey, fruit tea, man, nothing more refreshing than a nice Yifang fruit tea. Andrew, we Where's are debuting the official Yifang fruit tea right here. Ooh. This does not look like your average bowl, 
This is the next level. This is something that you saw from Taiwan. Obviously, there's a lot of tropical fruits in Taiwan. It's a subtropical island. And uh, they were able to incorporate that with the boba. I don't know if they've had this for a long time or if this is a more recent invention, but I know that this is like one of the things that you know, Taiwan's most famous for that's finally making it over to the US. Uh, this is actually kind of a thing right now, Andrew. This, uh, like the brown sugar streaks. Well, the gradient, having the different layers. Now, obviously these layers got mixed up a little bit, but usually it should be green, white, and then brown sugar, and then boba at the bottom. Brown sugar. As you sugar. can see, there is some mixing already, but uh, it's no, all but good. No, but Andrew, between brown sugar and the fresh fruit, those are two things that are pretty much new. Here's one of the marks of a high quality boba is actually if you touch the bottom, it still might be a little bit warm because the boba is supposed to be warm. It's Cantonese dessert spot right on this street called Mango Mango, and they serve a lot of palmelo, mango sagos, um, but this is the mango sago drink. Uh, yo, that is so good. That literally tastes exactly like the mango dessert that you get out of that cup at Mango Mango. This is the, uh, you know, house special Yifang fruit tea. This is my favorite fruit tea mm. in the whole world, Andrew. This is still a cheap eat because it's under $10 and you get an experience. I'm gonna just say this, guys. Yifang fruit tea, to my knowledge, in 2020 in the North America, that Yifang fruit tea might be the best boba chain in America. Another hidden gem cheap eat in Chinatown, Andrew, is on Pell Street. We're in front of Taiwan Bear House. Now, LA is traditionally known as having a lot more Taiwanese influence. Mm -hmm. New York City is a little bit more like SF in the sense there's a lot more Cantonese influence. The only Taiwanese representation in New York Chinatown are lunch spots. Let's go inside. Zha Chi Tui. This is a fried chicken leg. Oh, look at that juice. That is actually salted salt and pepper with a little bit of star and these perfectly. That's cooked perfectly. I love this. But crunch it. Wow. This is your fried pork chop. Ooh. Mmm. Let's see if we like it better or worse than Japanese katsu. Dust off first bite, Andrew. I think that might be better than Japanese katsu. I'm not saying, you know, it's better than Japanese katsu with the curry and with the, you know, red radish and everything like that but I think it might be better than Japanese katsu on its own. Taiwanese sodas. sodas. That tastes like 1963 to me. Popcorn chicken, right? Okay, yeah. This no, is this is crisp, well they call it crispy chicken, but it's essentially their popcorn chicken. It's, uh, these are dark, uh, these are dark meat pieces of chicken. Wow, look at that. The railroad bento pork chop. So this is braised, it has the uh, soft outer. Let's get it. It just gives it a whole completely different complexion. It doesn't have the hot oil fried in as much. Uh, these two were $6. This one was $6. This one was $6.50 actually because this is a braised yeah, railroad the, pork chop. These were about $11. <laughs> All right, Andrew, for myself, I've got to say that the Tsa Chi Tui, the fried chicken thigh, was easily my favorite. I'm just gonna go ahead and say the crispy pork chop is delicious because here's the thing. If you get the braised pork chop, you already get some braised pork in your rice. So why not get the crispy pork chop and then the braised pork chop on your bento? So you get both flavors. Yo, I kind of got to see Mongolian John have it. Mm -hmm. Mongol John. 200 pound Mongol John. Please try. We don't use this. Three different meats. Okay, it goes in for the Mongol John. This is the John. Mongol takeover show. Mongol John, which one is he picking? Okay, he goes with the crispy chicken first. Stuff is not, and then he goes in immediately. He more bite of the crispy pork chop. Wow, and then he's going for the crazy railroad pork chop. All three, three at one time. This is dead. Of course, you cannot go on a hidden gem cheap eats crawl without mentioning dumplings. Dumplings, you know, back in the day, Andrew, I think 15 years ago, you could get 10 dumplings for a dollar in Chinatown. Dumplings are still really, really, really cheap and pretty much a still a staple food in Chinatown, guys. Um, a lot of the other dumpling spots are not even open that we wanted to feature, but this spot right here, it's King Dumpling, guys. So let's see what the king has to offer. Oh. All right, so even though we got these dumplings to go, one thing that you gotta do before you leave the spot is pour your dumpling sauce on. It's a, I believe, I wanna say the concept of dumpling sauce came a little bit more from Japan for gyoza. They tend to put this like kind of spicy, sweet, Soy sesame sauce on there. Yo, here we are, King's Dumpling. It had a lot of stuff. I mean, I think that in 2020, if you're gonna open up a dumpling spot, you might as well serve uh, and be multifaceted. You might as well be multifaceted in your menu, whether that's sesame pancakes, that's dumplings, that's noodle soups, maybe even uh, 
a, a pancake wrap. These were four for 250. 150. So David, these this ban mian was two dollars and fifty cents. For two dollars and fifty cents. Two dollars and fifty cents. You cannot beat some Fujianese ban mian. Unbelievable to get this Shenzhen Bao for 250 for four of them, man. But obviously here we have the uh Kao Ya Bing. Hey. Roast duck bing. For 250, I mean you can't go wrong. Holy no, crap. No, and straight up, three dollars and twenty-five cents. This sesame pancake might be the best one I've had in Chinatown for $3.25. This is Shui Jiao boiled dumplings. I believe it is uh, four for 150. Yo, David, I have found my new dollar dumpling spot. Ounce per dollar for food value. This is the top one that we went to today. This whole video. Yeah, in terms of sheer volume of food for the price, you gotta look at pop up some of the menu prices there. Dumb cheap. King's Dumpling. Hey, still keeping the tradition of good, ultra-cheap Chinatown food alive. All right, we are coming to our last spot on this hidden gem, cheap eats, food crawl around Chinatown, New York. And you know, of course, we had to end at something that's so popular at HKG, Hong Kong Airport. They're opening up so many of these chains around China in the next couple years, Andrew. I think it's safe to say Chinese people love this chain. This Chinese chicken chain called Bai Bai Ji. And uh, of course, if you guys know, that's Popeye's chicken. Let's just say Louisiana Cajun food fits the Chinese palate very, very well, especially that... fried chicken. Oh my goodness. And, and more than like even beef ribs and barbecue sauce, Memphis, Tennessee style, this, fried chicken, man, fried chicken. All right, you guys, we are wrapping up our Chinatown Hidden Gems Cheap Eats with some very cheap eats. We're talking about Popeye's chicken, guys. They are gonna be opening up 1,500 locations in China over the next two years. That goes to show you, Andrew, they must really like it over there. You guys, we had to wrap it up. Andrew, what'd you learn about your, uh, on the crawl? I mean, for me, real quick, I'm just gonna have some of this uh, Popeye's popcorn shrimp. Guys, uh, I do wanna note that this Cajun rice honestly does look like some Luro Fan or it looks like some minced pork over rice that we just had at uh, Bear House. Andrew, what did you learn on this cheap hidden gems food crawl? I think that uh, the first thing that I took away is no matter how cheap a spot is, there's still a story behind it. Whether it was the people from uh, pretty much nearby our hometown or our grandfather's hometown of Hawksan from Hoi Ping at Steam House, the Taiwanese railroad bento boxes. There were so many stories behind so many different things. Wu's One Tun King. They did an episode with David Chang there and they're famous for replicating Hong Kong. Uh, I think one thing that I realized is that Despite Manhattan um, rent prices going up and everything getting more and more expensive, to be honest, there are some spots that are still really, really affordable. And I'm not saying that the prices aren't going up a little bit year after year. Still able to hold on to like the cheap Chinatown Eats theme. Yeah. You know, and, and, and for better or for worse, some of those spots are gonna close down and go away and switch up, but a lot of them are still remaining. All right, you guys, that does it for episode one of our Cheap Eats Hidden Gems food crawl. And we went everywhere, but particularly we spent a lot of time in a certain zone, the in-between zone between LES and Chinatown. Yeah. Uh, there's way more than we covered though. Yeah, so we're gonna keep this series going because there's a lot more spots that we need to cover, but we just want to let you guys know that Chinatown is opening up. I mean, you already know what it is, Cheap Eats in Chinatown. And by the way, guys, we're just doing these talking segments for like 10 seconds at a time without a mask. Believe me, we're masked up.